So welcome everybody. Welcome to Energy Play Show number 30. So this is the, the last podcast, uh, the last um, Energy Play Shop of 2022. So um, welcome everybody and um, we made it. <laughs> we made it and um, let's see. I'm just checking the, the chats. Okay. Okay. Yep, thank you very much. So the, the topic for this evening is really power over self. And this is a continuation from last week. Last week, we started talking about clearing our solar plexus. Our solar plexus is re, it's um, also called our power center. So it's called our power center, and it is really about embodying our own power. And um, <laughs> that's why it's such a, a um, important um, energy center in our body. And I just want to briefly... Uh, okay, before I go right in to talk about how come, you know, so to to really talk about power how come uh, and before i started recording there are people mentioning different um first people just saying that how come people are so uh, it seems to be aggressive stressed out and all of that well yes a part of it is because it's end of the year everybody is trying to um prepare for holidays so that there's usually more things that you have to do like um, getting ready making uh, uh, or if you are still working then you there there'll be times um, year-end stuff that may be required in, in the in the workplace and all of that so it seems like everything is bunching up together that's part of the, the, the stress as well. And also um, it's energetic stress as well. There's so much energy hitting us. Um, yes, there are, are there strong energy hitting us? Absolutely. <laughs> it has not stopped. It's like the last couple of years has been getting stronger and stronger and stronger and it has not stopped and it will not stop. Until when? Until we all pushed out everything that is disempowering us from our body. So the energy is actually supporting us to learn how to, how to embody our own power because we um, on, on the planet, on earth, it's been our power has been pilfered and, <clears throat> and um, taken over and and really shut down for a very long time for millenniums. Yeah, for thousands and thousands of years. And all of this energy is actually pushing us, reminding us and making sure that everything within that we still hold within our body that is, um, that is not aligning with who we truly are as a, a, a spiritual person um, or as our authentic self or the, the part that we are here to play, the reason why we come on the planet. If we are not embodying that, then the energy is just going to keep throwing us and keep reminding us until we either give up by dying or we push through and we become um, who we truly are. And that's what ascension is about. Ascension is we remembering who we truly are. That's, that's ascension in a nutshell. We, um, <clears throat> so, but before I go into all the details of that, let's just, uh, um, the, the topic for this evening is, yes, solar plexus. So I'm just going to do a very quick review of what, where is the solar plexus? What, um, what are the, the emotions and and those things um, and the element that is associated with the um, solar plexus? Just a very quick review of um, some of the things that I've covered last week, and then I'm going to start to talk about power over self, and that's really 
empowerment is really the whole reason for solar plexus. And that's, that's what the solar plexus is there to um, do. And when we really learn the lessons of empowering ourselves, then we um, then our solar plexus will be spinning beautifully bright um, yellow. Yes, bright yellow. Um, <laughs> so I uh, I'm supposed to wear something yellow today, but <laughs> didn't feel like it. So yes, so this is kind of purple. So it's purple, black, and blue, all of that color. So not really as much um, not theme related this evening. However, um, <clears throat> so the first thing that I would like to do with everybody is really to take everyone into a presence meditation. So let's, uh, let's just mute everybody. And then we will start doing that presence meditation. So just taking a deep breath, just breathe in. And when you can breathe in no more, then just slowly let go of your breath. Just let it all out slowly. And then breathe in again. Take another deep breath in. And let it all out. And then take in one more deep breath. And then let it all go. And now that you have started to smooth out your own breathing, continue to follow the rhythm of your own breathing with the intention of elongating your breath as much as it is still comfortable for you. Use your breath. Use your breath to take your body into a relaxed mode. Just simply de-stress. Let go of any tension in your body. And when your body become more relaxed, then also have the intention to relax your mind as well. Just let go of the need to think of anything. No need to think about what happened earlier. No need to think about the weather. No need to think about what's going to happen tomorrow. Just calm down. Relax. Just be with yourself, with your body in this moment. Just be here for yourself. Be absolutely selfish in this moment. Only focus on yourself. Focus on your body, focus on your breath. And set the intention that you want to call back all of your attention to yourself. During the day, you have been focusing on doing things around the house, working, connecting with other people. But in this moment, simply be with yourself. Call back all of your attention to you. And just focus on what's happening within your body. Focus on your breath. Use your breath to Really allow your body to come into a calm state. Focus on yourself here and now. 
just be very, very present with your body. And let go of any worries, any judgment about your body or about the state of your body. Simply just be, just be. However your body is being is simply fine. Just be with your body, be present. Absolutely 100% present with you in this moment. And when you feel all of your attention in your body and you feel your body actually becoming more solid and grounded and you can come all the way back. into the room, open your eyes if you have closed them, and welcome back everybody. Okay, so let's begin. I just want to actually share, um, share screen and um, show you the so this is what we kind of talked about last week about what the solar plexus chakra is about. So where it is, it is really just, it's just between your stomach and um, your chest. So right at the, the lowest part of your chest and the uppermost part of your stomach. So that's where your solar plexus chakra is. And it is, um, a the energy field, the energy center within your body that corresponds to the feeling of fear, anxiety, personal power, any any kind of um, judgment, opinion, and also spiritual growth as well. And it is also the um, it is also the the natural home of our. Earth soul, our entity, it's there. That's where it is. <clears throat> and the element that most resonate with this solar plexus chakra is the fire element. Fire as in transformation. So it is really a, um, a very powerful energy center. So Anything to do with power, will, self-control, vitality, purpose, or direction. These are all things that we, um, that's all about the, the solar plexus chakra. So if you have any issues with, um, with power, whether you um, are feeling like you are, some people are, lacks power or some people have um a really wanted to get more power power hunger so whether it is in excess or in or deficient so these would be an indication of where some of the energy within this chakra may be um, not in balance so it's also about cause and effect because cause and effect is that we, we are creators. We have the power to create and how we use our, our power to create responsibly. This is really where this energy center is where we um, get to see and to learn how we by our willpower how we cause things to happen and also what is the the outcome of what we wish to happen what we what we made happen we also get to experience the effect of that too and i also mentioned that we are actually omnipotent meaning that we are all powerful 
we are so powerful that we actually even have the power to limit our own power. And we limit ourselves unconsciously by limiting our energy, our capacity to act, and also the skills that we bring in with us in our lifetime as well. So this is really a very high level um, review of what we talked about last week. Um, and so I want to continue on. Um, <clears throat> oh, okay. I also want to mention that I also uh, talk about that. The, the, the power. So we talked about power. So what is power? I just want to repeat. What is power? Power, the definition that I would um, that I really resonate with and I want to repeat is that power is the energy behind our capacity to mold our experience at the soul level as well as at the physical level in our body and in our environment. And when I mean in our environment, I also include the people around us. They are part of our environment. So a powerful person can affect all of that. They don't necessarily have to do anything just by who they are they they um, if they really have that power then just by being present they can actually affect the environment as well not too many people um really embody our power uh, to that extent however that is really what power can do and also, I, I talked about last week that power is a circuit, meaning that it has to, um, it has to be balanced. So if you give too much of your power away, then it's going to unbalance you. If you only give and you don't receive, then it's going to create an imbalance. If you only receive and you don't give, that's also going to create an imbalance. So that's what I mean by power is a circuit. We are here to learn about power. And that is what the, the, um, the solar plexus chakra is all about. It's really when we are here on earth, we can actually um, learn by creating things, by making things happen. That's how we, we learn is we throw something out and then whatever comes back and then we modify our uh, approach so that next time when we put out our intention or we take action, that we whatever the result is, is more to um, our preference. So that's what we are learning here. And the only way we can learn is to make mistakes. So mistakes is really the paving the way to success. And what I want to talk about is the power over self. So before I talk about power over self, I actually want to talk about power over others. Mm -hmm. We've been living in a paradigm where it's all about power over others. So what do I mean by that? Not, not that we all... <clears throat> intentionally set out to take other people's power away. Sometimes we do it very unconsciously. Sometimes we do it consciously, but we do it from the goodness of our heart. For example, we teach our children, oh, um, do this, do this, do this, do this. That is, so in a way that is really power over others. We don't think of that. But it is, is that we think that, okay, I've learned all this, um, all, all, I have all this experience, I've learned all this, and I now I want to teach someone else and let give them all the benefits of my experience, especially if they are related to us, as in our uh, kids. They will want to make sure that they understand and follow what it is that, that we have tried and what is tried and true. So we always think to, to teach um, the people that we love. 
that this is there is a right way, there's a wrong way. And um, so that is, in a way, <clears throat> power over others. Um, maybe not out of malice, maybe we our intention is good, but it is still power over others. So in a way, we we still disempower them. The so uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. And um, other ways that we um, we have power over others is that, um, for example. Well, some time ago, we everybody was asked to um, wear a mask, for example, because there's a lot of reason why. Because we want to to protect certain people. Um, so, so in order to protect certain people, we have to make sure that um, people have no no choice but to put a, a mask over them. So that is power over others in a with very good intention. And um, other things that we we use power over others is that, for example, um, let's say if my my um, neighbor come and cut my tree down, I won't be very happy, but instead of you know trying to go and uh, of course I would trying to go and stop my my neighbor from doing that, and, and my neighbor of course um, they have their own. Let's for example, I'm just creating something just for for illustration is that they you know didn't didn't want to somehow we didn't come to a an agreement. So one some of the ways that we can make sure that um, whatever it is that our own preferred experience can be can be upheld is that we go to the government we we go and we call the police to come so we use an outside power to and also um, um, bylaws and all of that to make sure that the uh, our neighbor behave a certain way so that's also ways of using power over others so we have lived in that world for the last couple of, I don't know how many thousands of of years and not saying that it is good not saying that it is bad I'm just saying that that's what we've been doing is power over others the way we have been trained and learned how to exercise power and also to have power is to um, take other people's power away or use some ways to take other people's power away. That is, um, that's not the only way though. It's not the only way. That's one of the ways for better or for worse. There's one of the ways. And we were playing in that paradigm of good, bad, and um, power over others. So we've been playing in that. And now that is, we are playing in a very different paradigm. <clears throat> so now I want to come to, um, so how come so many people are so stressed and they are getting sick, some are getting sick and um, there are actually quite a number of people even within our own circle that have checked out. So what really is going on? The people that have checked out, um, well, they are in our circle. So they are good people. We're not talking about people that are breaking the law or taking um, or doing bad things. They, they are actually good people. So why is that? The, I've mentioned that the, we are changing our paradigm. So, we are no longer doing the power over other kind of paradigm. So we have to actually learn how to, we have to learn a very different way of um, reclaiming our own power. Power is not a, um, it's not a, a zero, a zero sum game. It's not 
that if I have more power, then somebody has to have less power in order to get, get to zero. That's not, that's not what power is. Power is actually limitless because we as um, a creator-like being, our essence, not, not necessarily who, the, who we are, are being, um, most of us are being in this moment, but our essence, our um, potential is to be limitless, omnipotent. So how do we get from where we are now to where um, to get back to being that creator being that we are all actually we all agreed to go back to that the so the way we have, have done it is not just wave a wand and phew, everybody is changed overnight which is shift into a completely different um, parallel um, universe. That's not the way that we, we chose to do it. We, as the human being, um, on playing on Earth, what we want to do is to actually give everyone a chance to learn how to reclaim our power. So, so in order to talk about how to reclaim our power, I want to talk a little bit about how do we lose our power? We lose our power by limiting ourselves. I've already mentioned that. So, so how do we limit ourselves? We limit ourselves by um, identifying. So for example, I'm Winnie Louie. So that's that's my name. That's that's my name. So what did I just said? I am Winnie Louie. So what's the limitation? that Winnie is, is um, not just Winnie, Winnie is limiting enough because there are so many other names that I could have picked out there, but I've narrowed it down to just one name and not just one name, but a surname as well. A surname does not just limit me to being who I am, but who I am with this family. So I'm not just who I am, I'm also identifying myself with all the characteristics of people in my lineage. So that's that's really how we limit ourselves, is we identify as this name, this personality, uh, who is a uh, product of a certain family. And also uh, each family would have an ethnicity. So mine is Chinese. So, so we, so um, instead of being eternal essence in that I can be, that I exist beyond time and space, I have now limited myself to being Winnie Louie, who is this family, have the, I carry the, the all the, the thought patterns lineage of my lineage and I'm a certain ethnicity. And if I um, continue to qualify that I live in Toronto, then I ex also live within the confines of what um, Torontonians are allowed to do as a society and Canada as a society, which may be very different if I, we're in a completely different um, continent, uh, different country. The the all the, the what is normal for that country will be very different from where I am in this moment right now. So that is really how we limit ourselves is by identifying and not saying that it is a it's a good thing, not saying that it is a bad thing, and just saying that. That is a thing that we do in order to limit our own power. So if we know how we limit our own power, then the reverse is we have to start to let go. Does not mean that, okay, I'm not going to talk to my mother or my, uh, my family anymore because I don't want to be part of them. No, that's not it. It's to understand that, yes, I am, I am that. I'm Winnie Louie, but I'm also much much more than that. So I am acknowledging that I'm that, 
and so much more. That is, um, so I'm acknowledging who I am without needing to identify and defend who I am. So that's what I, I, I'm suggesting is that that's really the way to start to get our own power back. And the other way is how come people are so stressed now? It's because um, we've lived in a power over others paradigm and we have um, accumulated certain habits. We, and we have certain personalities that is very, or I should say it's, uh, it's not quite aligned with who we truly are. And I cannot speak for anyone else. I can only speak from myself is, is that um, there are a lot of things that I, that I still feel that, that is no longer aligned within myself. And I've actually, um, so, mm, okay. So for example, if I feel like, okay, I am this, I am, I am a coach, I'm a life coach. And somebody comes around and say, oh, life coaches are the worst. They don't know anything. They just um, telling you how to live your life like people who don't know how to do they teach so they are bad mouthing being um life coach for example and so i get i got triggered so why why did i get triggered because there's something about that i haven't quite um i'm not quite secure in who I am and also I'm not quite secure in being uh, the life coach that I am so I would start to disagree with that person I would so instead of really looking at well you know what that person says actually has some truth in it and um, and there's some truth in it who am I to to tell other people how to to, to run their life because you know my life is not all that perfect so yes they may have a point and if I have if I have resolved all of my own insecurities I would be able to be able to um, be with that comment and actually have a discussion while well in your in your opinion then so what's the best way instead of being, uh, what's the best way to coach someone or to be with someone and help them to, um, to, to, to step uh, beyond their own limitations. I could have that, that conversation with somebody. However, if I were triggered, then I would project all of my insecurities to that person and um, I would feel triggered. I would be angry and stressed instead of being able to hold a, uh, um, a level-headed discussion with that person. So that is really who, that is actually what's happening now. Is that within each person, we have unprocessed emotions, we have limiting beliefs, which we have inherited because we've lived um, under uh, um, the paradigm of power over others for such a long time. So instead of really knowing that, oh, that person come along and said something and triggered me, that means I still have something within myself that need to be, need to, to process, to um, really think through instead of, Looking at it this way, everybody is simply going to defend mode. And um, so that's what's really happening so much is most people 
after the last couple of years is already stressed. Um, there's a lot of changes happening happened to us in the last couple of years. We are already stretched very thin, and and then now the energies is coming in and pushing everybody's buttons, um, no matter um, who you are, um, unless you you've really figured out your life and you you really have work through all of your, your emotions, projections, all of that. And you and so unless you have done all this work, most people what they do instead of um somebody saying something to you, you get triggered and you lash out and you project all the worst things and all the things that you have not processed within yourself onto them. Instead of that, what we should be doing is Thank you very much for triggering me. Now I know what it is that I have not processed yet. So it takes it takes a very self-aware person to be able to to say um, when somebody would just you know lash out at you to be able to say thank you for your opinion. <laughs> and if you if you um, like. If you think that what they're saying is 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 valid, thank them and go and <clears throat> do some inner work. Or if you don't like their if their opinion is really just you know their own their own <clears throat> um, their own opinion, their own judgment, it has no validity. What you can do when somebody says something that triggers you is. Well, thank you very much for your opinion and smile, laugh and walk away. That is not like we can do that as well. So um, so that's why everybody's so stressed is because we. The energy is pushing us to really look at what does not truly resonate with where we at right now and it's pushing everybody so the people that have not done their own inner work and is not interested in doing any inner work they they are so stressed out they go and lash out to other people um actually doing them uh, a, a favor by triggering them and letting them know what it is that they have not processed and and so that is what's happening. And um, so that's what I want to talk the, about is truth versus truth versus projection. So when we interact with one another, do we actually know or is in a calm space to be able to decipher what is true? whatever it is that they're saying is is it are they actually saying something that is the truth or are they simply projecting their own opinion their own unprocessed material onto you and also are you actually projecting all of your unprocessed emotions um when you're reacting to someone else so now is really the time, especially um, during the holidays, because we we get together with families um, and close friends, and those people are really um, they know you. Hopefully, they know you the best, and they actually know exactly what to say to you in order to trigger you. So when you get triggered, and if and when you get triggered, actually not not when, but if uh, not if, but when. Because they are definitely going to say things that are going to trigger you. Is to um, you have a choice. Do you do you react, or do you just calmly or um, just notice that? Oh, I still have something that they tr I got triggered, and now I know what it is that I have not processed, and I need to go and spend some time after. The, the meal after the meeting, after the party to go and um, really process and let go of those emotions. So that is really what the our choice is. And when we do that, we actually take back our own power. 
our own power of being able to act rather than react. Because when we react, when out of being triggered, when we react, we actually, we don't have power because we, when we react, we are not being who we truly are. We, we're not being who we truly are. Whereas when we actually are in a calm space, we can actually choose, okay, yes, um, I know that all they are, all they're doing is, is they're just projecting. I could have say something that is going to, you know, um, <clears throat> poke at them as well, to trigger them as well. But, you know, do I actually want to have that kind of a, an evening where we both actually just, just trying to poke at each other? Or do I want to have a um, more pleasant evening? So we get to choose what kind of experience we actually want to have we can actually have with the people around us, with our, with our environment. That really is power when, and, and specifically power over ourselves. Because when we get to choose how we act when we are triggered, that is power. Nobody can um, push you out of your own center when you have that. So, um, any questions uh, so far? Comments? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, I was just, uh, I, I'm back over there a little bit, but I was just thinking the other reason people might be a little bit pissed off is I don't know if any, anybody else is affected, but my sleep has been affected for over two years now. So, because I'm not getting the same amount of sleep, um, it's possible to be more irritated than normal. Just, just a comment. The other thing, though, is um, well, I, I was just thinking that. Well, it's come to my attention recently that um, on a regular basis, if you're not sort of looking after your own emotional self. If you're not kind of either writing it out or expelling some built up emotions sort of on a regular basis, whatever that is for you, whether it's exercise or whether it's nature, whatever it is, then you're going to get a build up and, and you're going to have this, you're going to be off balance. You're not going to be able to keep yourself on balance as easily. Anyway, that's the comment. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, yeah, sleep is um, a couple of things. Yes, I have heard of that, that sleep is um, a little um, dicey these days. And um, there are so many, so many causes, so many reasons for it. However, I want to throw a couple of suggestions out is um, sleep. How, how much sleep do we actually need? We used to think that, you know, we, we taught that we need nine hours, seven hours, 10 hours. So there is a set hours that we need. That was in the old paradigm. This is a new paradigm. I, I'm not suggesting that, you know, well, okay, if you only get two, two hours of sleep, that that is okay, don't worry about it. I'm not suggesting that. I'm, I'm just saying that um, do not, is to let go of the, the, the fixed idea that you need seven hours of sleep. Otherwise, you're going to be... <sighs> <laughs> don't talk to me till I have my coffee that kind of person <laughs> <clears throat> is that um, just your body needs to be supported so really inquire what your body needs and also know that your body is going to change so don't um, have the, the set idea that you know if you don't have this 
because you used to have this I mean you don't have this then it's going to be bad because if you believe that it's going to be bad then you are going to your body is going to actualize it it's going to manifest that so mm -hmm. just let go <clears throat> and if you feel yourself um, lacking energy is to a uh, couple of things that you can really do um, number one is really meditate especially if you if you wake up in the middle of the night you can't sleep well you know what meditate is actually really good to meditate because what our body needs is actually rest and when we meditate we our body is actually at rest um um, there are a lot of, um, our body runs a lot of um, background energies and all that, taking care of ourselves. When we, when we meditate, especially if it's just a clear mind, just clear your thoughts to meditate. When you blank out your mind, if you can do that, you actually recharge your batteries a lot. So even when you are, when you don't have enough sleep, when you don't think you have enough sleep, but if you actually meditate and meditating like for 15, 20 minutes, um, it's actually equivalent to having two hours of sleep, roughly, um, depending on the person. So if you manage to meditate, then um, your body still would be able to have enough energy as well. So try meditating. Whether you meditate when you wake up in the middle of the night or not, that, that doesn't matter. You can also meditate even when you are up uh, after you're up is to meditate. Take, take your time, start at five minutes and then um, increase it. If you can manage five minutes every day, increase it to 10. When you can manage 10, increase it to 20, increase it to half an hour. So it's it's usually between 15 and 20 minutes. That's when you start to really recharge your batteries, you really feel the difference. So meditation, being in nature, um, hopefully. <laughs> A uh, forest would be nice. Um, if not, then anywhere that is in nature, close to a lake or some somewhere. So being in nature is also very um, recharging as well. Let's see. Um, what else can we do to to recharge ourselves? Um, meditation nature i think those those two are the, the the most important thing and also be very mindful of what you take in as well what, what your food intake is as well um <clears throat> being in nature so how come we we recharge is in nature um, especially around the forest there's a lot of biophotons in the forest that is really a living energy that the, a tree gives off. So when we are in that environment, it's so much easier for, for our body to recharge itself. So that's why being in nature is so um, healing. So these are some of my suggestions. What else? Any other comments? <clears throat> May I say something? Sure. Um, uh, Lynn, uh, when you met Lynn, yeah, at the Qigong class, when you came that day? Yep. Um, she <laughs> is teaching us that uh, every morning when we get up, if we stretch our arms out straight to the sides, face down, and spin clockwise uh, 21 times, but you cannot do it right away 21 times. So you start with like seven and then go up higher every day. It uh, does bring a lot of energy into your body for the day. And you can do it like seven times with your hands facing down to the ground 
and seven times with your hands still stretched out, but facing up to the sky. So that's another exercise to kind of rejuvenate. It helps mm -hmm. every day if you do it in the morning. Okay, great. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Oh, uh, actually, I now I remember <coughs> um, the saw seats. Saw seats. I remember a while ago we um, we talked about saw seats. Saw seats actually um, gives you biophotons as well. So drinking water from saw seats gives you energy. Exercise will um, create more energy within your body. So those are a couple of ways that we can get more energy. How, how about we also put the sources in that bowl of water? I was thinking, which Sifu said for the oh, 20 years. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that would be excellent. That would be excellent. Yeah, because the bowl of water <clears throat> is going to be in your environment. So yeah. it's going to give out, um, besides besides being able to bring you luck, it can also give out biophotons, which is definitely good for you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Any other comments, questions? Okay. <clears throat> okay, so let me just continue then. Um, the next topic I want to cover is so how do we learn how do we learn learn learning to um recuperate our power to rediscover our power because we we started out being creator beings with limitless power and yes we we identify with identification, we limit our own power. And um, of course, we also, when we, uh, within the, the, the third dimension, when we come here, we, we totally forgot who we, who we are. So that's part of the, the, the way that the game was played. So now that we are moving out of that, um, how do we now regain our memory of who we are. So it is really about learning. So we learn by <clears throat> um so I want to talk about this this concept of consuming something versus learning from something. So for example, um, I'm doing this podcast, or for example, I'm taking um, I'm taking workshops from Sifu James. So I can learn from Sifu James. So this is really learning because I know Sifu James has a lot of his his gifts are very different from mine things that he can do and, and and he really has dedicated a lot of his life to explore and 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 grow his gifts so I can really learn from him. So that's learning from someone. However, um what's the difference between learning from someone because learning from someone versus consuming consuming meaning that I'm relying on him. So I think of him as, oh, he's the master. Whatever he says is this the right thing. I like he I I I adore him. Everything he says is the the truth is always right. And um, so if I do that, I'm stepping over to consuming because instead of learning from somebody who has different gifts. And, and have um, different experience, who would be able to 
assist me in regaining my own power, I now has given my power to Sifu James. Um, so that is really a choice that each person can can make. It's not that Sifu James is there to uh, take my power away. No, he is there to teach everyone. However, it is how I um, how I am being when I am um, with him. Um, am I trying to learn from him so that I can use what it is that he has? Um, learned from he has 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 gotten from his all of his experience and take it as um into myself and also try it on and see what resonates with me and what it is that I can actually grow more of and be able to expand on what he has um discovered or am I actually taking what it is that he he's telling me and i'm only going to do that and i and i would just do everything that he does that really is um giving my power away that is what i would term consuming because i'm no longer learning for the um intention of growing my own power i'm actually taking his classes so that I don't have to be good any I don't have to do anything extra I just have to um think that okay he's the best he knows everything I'm just going to uh, um, copy everything that he does as brilliant as Sivu James maybe and this goes to any master any ascended master anyone who is an expert is in any field is when we go and learn from that expert that master we still have to bring it into ourselves and see does it resonate with me and and not just to take everything in and just make a copy of it and just conduct my life like that from from now on that's actually what we've been doing is our, our parents gave us their wisdom we take everything in and we only do that and we keep that as a tradition that's not the way it's supposed to be it's supposed to be that they give us their experience and what we do is try it on and then we really within ourselves see what resonates with us what are the parts of what I've learned that I would like to explore more of and grow more so that I can actually stand on a master or my parents' shoulders so I can actually start to go and do even greater things? Or am I simply just tick, 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 tick their experience and I'm not going to do uh, I'm, I'm not going to own that that learning so that is how do we grow our own power we can't just you know flip a switch and say okay now the the, the power of other paradigm is done now power over self flip the switch and I'm on power over self mode now it does not work like that there is a transition period. Everyone is on this journey. We are all taking, we're still looking at other people as an example. And then we try it on and we, whatever it is that resonate with us, we go and take that as a base so that we can start to create from that, that, um, starting points to create even better things and that's what that's how we can actually take back our own power is not to deny everything that other people says is actually okay yeah whatever it is that he is saying has wisdom it has his lifelong explorations wisdom what we are doing is really to take that wisdom 
and try it on and then expand it so that we can become the creator, not creating with their work, but combine what we've learned from um, other masters. And when we actually combine our experience with someone else's experience, we actually create something that is completely new, that has never before been um, explored within the human history. And that's how we can start to take back our own power and start to remember and regain who we truly are as limitless beings. So that's what I want to talk about in, in terms of consuming versus really learning. Are we learning from somebody or are we actually consuming their experience? Or are we, um, and that can apply to anything. Like when we go to the movies, are we actually consuming that movie and just, you know, getting entertained? Oh, so nice. And then once we're out of the movie, it totally, it does not um, change us. Some of the movies, really very thought-provoking movies, they're, they are there, out there. So instead of consuming a movie, is always be on the lookout to learn something from a movie. So, and I, I'm, I just um, use movie as a, an ex, ex, uh, example. It's, it's not just it's like everything that we do in life, we can take as a learning example. <laughs> We don't have to just go take a workshop. It's just living life, just, just observing nature. There's so many things we can learn, just observing nature. So many things that we can learn, just being in a movie, in a theater. So we, that's how we are going to take back our own power to remember who we truly are is by taking that opportunity of life. Everything in life is really teaching us something. So are you consuming your experiences in life or are you actually learning and building on everything, everything that your soul actually um, conspired to bring to you? So that's what I want to talk about in terms of how one of the ways that we can take back our power is that life itself is a great learning experience, a great opportunity, a great platform to remember and to um, take back our power. Comments? Questions? Okay, wonderful. So, power over self. Let me just. <clears throat> um, power over self. So, how do we? Okay, so now I want to really go into power over self. So. Apart from just living life is what's the best way to regain power, regain our power, the, the power that we used to have before we were born. Or even at birth, we actually still retained a lot of uh, the power. It's, it's only... Um, after we, we come here, we, we the, the, the density of birth at the time, at the time of our birth, that we start to get into more identification, more of those, those um, limiting beliefs that we have adopted. So first thing we can do is acceptance. Um, 
acceptance is really the one of the most important thing that we can learn. Um, so acceptance. Um, for example, self acceptance. Just very, very easy. Um, our face. So my face, for example, my face. Um, so for the longest time, I look in the mirror and you know, yeah, I don't like that face. I like to to look like you know, Scarlett Johansson or some of the pretty movie stars. That's that's what my belief at the time um, at the time was is um, I really took on the Hollywood ideal of what being beautiful is and and it's like I look at my face nah I don't accept it <clears throat> so acceptance acceptance self-acceptance is such a a discipline that um, I am still learning. So acceptance is when you accept yourself, no matter where you're at. I'm not saying that, you know, okay, I accept myself and this is it. No more, I'm done. No, you accept where you are in this moment. And then you look at, okay, so I am where I am in this moment. So where do I, what do I actually want to experience next? So you, without accepting where you are, who you are and how you are in this moment, you cannot take the next step. So that's why acceptance is really the first step in Picking back your own power. So there's a lot of things to accept. Acceptance, accepting my, my, my age, accepting my face, accepting um, where I am in my career, where I am in my um, relationship status, all of those things without acceptance. I don't know where my starting point is. Because when you accept yourself, then you know where you are. The next thing to do is really to understand why you are where you are. Why you are who you are. So so let's say if I feel, if I look at the, the mirror, I don't like what I see. I see, I got to the point where, okay, I accept that this is the way I look. And then I have to understand, the next step is to understand, why do I not accept my face? I mean, this is, this is my face. It's not like if I, um, like I can just, you know, wipe off the mirror and then draw another face in. That's never going to happen. That's not how reality is is why do I feel that um, that that non-acceptance? So I've already mentioned, it's because I bought into the belief that, you know, beauty is a certain way. And I'm, I don't, I don't um, conform to that way. So that's why, you know, by, by logic, I am not beautiful. So, and then, that's so that is the belief that I that is the belief so really try on that belief and see okay so so this that means that I'm accepting someone else's standard of beauty rather than accepting the um, the face that I actually picked for myself for this incarnation I picked this face I picked this body I picked everything I picked my ethnicity all that I created this body for myself so I'm seeing that you know that other standard of beauty is actually more 
powerful, more important than my own um, choice. So, so understanding that that really is the conversation and get to the part where, okay, um, now that I know that's really the conversation is, do I want to keep it that way? And if not, then what is my next step? So my next step could be a lot of things. I can decide to you know, do plastic surgery if I don't like it. If I still like to um, adhere to someone else's um, standard of beauty, there's so many things I can do. Plastic surgery, I can put on makeup, I can do all sorts of things. I can t uh, do dieting, all that. So, so many things that I can do, but without acceptance, without knowing why I feel what I feel, I wouldn't know what, um, what's the next step. So those are the three things. Accepting, which is know where you are, and then understand why you are where you are, and then take action to change things that you are no longer, um, that you no longer agree with from that. And so that really is how we can start to empower ourselves, whatever that means to you. Um, so that's kind of a easy way of empowering. And now I actually want to um, talk about, the last thing I want to talk about is really so I have a, a definition of, of what power is. And I also mentioned that we are creators. Um, so power, I actually want, just want to read out what, my, what the definition of power is. Power is the energy behind our capacity to mold our experience at the soul level and as well as at the physical level in our body and in our environment. So power, in, within power, there is energy. There is this, this energy. And, and now I'm, I wanna talk about, so we have learned that in the, the power over others paradigm, we have learned that, well, well, when we want power, we have to actually work very hard. We have to, you know, use our will to, to make things, to actually take action, do things and convince others, blah, 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 to really to um, put our will into action. So that is one way of being powerful. And the more fifth dimension way of being powerful is has to do with looking at what power actually is. The way we have been exercising power and using power and understanding power in the old paradigm is that power means action. Um, yes, it does take some action. Really, it does take and it takes some action. However, power is also mental power as well. That is one of the power that we haven't quite explored. We think of power as being, when I say mental power, I don't mean, okay, I want to convince other people by words so that they'll do what I want them to do. That's, that's not what I mean by mental power. When I, um, so power is, is energy is that as a creative being, we actually have the power to think of something. Uh, the, there's a saying that when, when you are in your power, you can say to the mountain, move and it will move. That really illustrates what power really is about. And 
we actually have that power. Um, right now, it may be hard for you to, to understand that because we have been so powerless to be able to use our power and actually, you know, compel somebody to do something or some or the mountain to do something. Mountain as in our environment, the nature to do something is unthinkable or um, it seems like it's it's like fairy tales, but actually from my understanding of what omnipotence is, actually that's what we are capable of. We are actually capable of just thinking of something and being able to use our, just that thought, just the purity and clarity of that thought will be able to shape the environment, not in a powerful way, but because um, all because of presence. So a presence, for example, I remember a long time ago, I, I wanted to, to give, to recall um, a, a, a story I heard, uh, it actually is something that actually happened. Um, Queen Elizabeth II, before she passed away, a long time ago now, I don't know how many years, but it could have been decades ago, there was one time that somebody actually broke into Buckingham Palace and got into her room. And um, what was the person trying to do there? I forgot. But the, however, um, Queen Elizabeth was not harmed in any way. Why? That person could have harmed her, could have, uh, could have, you know, taken her jewelry, could have done some harm to her, or at the very least could have scared her, could have killed her, could have done a lot of things. However, what actually happened was they just had a conversation. So, so that's what I read in the, the newspaper. Is that true or not? I don't know. I just, that story actually stuck with me. Is that, you know, if somebody actually broke into Buckingham Palace, got into that place, um, and all they did was have a chat with, um, with the queen, that was like, unbelievable and however Queen Elizabeth herself with her presence and she has presence because she is the longest reigning monarch in 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 the in Britain's um or UK's history uh, I believe so I believe she she was so her presence was such that when that person broke into her room, all that person could do is just had a conversation with her and couldn't do anything else beyond just having that conversation. So that's what presence is. Is when you truly own who you are, know who you are, living who you are, and you are in your own power. Just You can just walk into a room and the room will be transformed according to your liking. So that is what presence is. And that's actually what um, I wanna talk about in terms of power is this energy. We think of energy as doing work but energy is actually in presence as well, in being. So that's why the, the um, I am is such an, is such an am amazing affirmation is because I am is about presence. When you, like, instead of saying, oh, I'm Winnie, I'm, uh, I'm this, um, life coach, I live in Toronto, all I need to, or I so need to say is I am. 
no need to identify with anything, anyone beyond that I am. And so that's what I want to end with. Questions? Comments? Beautiful message. I like it. I think the queen should, should have got better security. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think she probably have a very good uh, security, but somehow <laughs> that person <laughs> got, got in. Yeah. It happened to Kretchen too. Somebody broke into Kretchen's place too. Ah, I didn't know about that. Yeah, yeah. And then it would turned out okay. I think I think he he hit them or his wife hit them something anyway. But anyway. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Never thought about that before, how um we really aren't maybe aren't owning our own power. We're very sort of depending on on outside things and and so dependent rather than interdependent. Um, the reason why we are such a consumption society is like you know every time every time I I go on the internet I it's like shopping center like the shopping channel um, you go on. Facebook, any social media, there's so many ads that's thrown at you. Like, buy this, buy that, consume, consume, consume. Yeah. It's it's all because of um that really is is part of the agenda. Is you know, okay, so I don't feel good about myself, so I need a new car, I need a new dress, I need a new glasses, I need new hairdo, just so that I can feel better. Yeah. So that's that's so we can do that. We can we can have a new dress, like I can go buy a new dress, new everything. Um, how long would I feel better about myself? Mm, not very long, but if I actually do the work and accept myself and be okay with myself and really learn to love myself and treat myself well, that um, nobody can earn money from, from that. <laughs> if they can't sell me something, then, you know, they're not interested in that. So that's, that's, that's why, yeah, we are, we are constantly bombarded by, 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 by. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no change, yeah? sorry what was that i'm saying that's another way to change our our thing of uh, get being aware of that consumerism not yeah. allowed to be drawn into it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes I oh, I, I understand that, like, uh, because uh, I took a few classes with the Jenna, and she always says that whatever I teach you, don't think that I'm a guru or something. You are here to learn. So since that day, I whatever the workshop I go to, I said I'm here in a school to learn. I will pick what is resonate with me, and then I'll see what I can do with it. Yeah. Now we know this, whereas before yes. this, this guru, oh, she, she is the best. She is the best. <laughs> I'm going to donate all my money to them and all that. Yeah. <laughs> whereas now we know that. We know better. <laughs> yes, we are. We, we're learning. Okay, any other comments, questions? If not, then let's do our meditation. Yes. 
Okay, so I'm 